I think a lot of people, when it comes to how they set their hunting goals, they get really focused on how many they kill or how big is the rack. Success or failure isn't measured in inches all the time. There's a lot of other little goals you can have, whether it's going into a new area and killing a deer there or, or having success and not focus so much on how big that rack was. It's scouting day here in Tennessee, just before opener. It's Wednesday, the hunt starts on Friday. Now normally you'd want to scout an area long before you get to go hunt it, but I don't have that luxury. So the great thing about Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, TWRA, is that every year they manage numerous properties and any Tennessee resident can put in a lottery to get to hunt the public land. I was drawn for the Hiawassee Refuge Never been there, never scouted it. So we're gonna get in, we're gonna look for sign, we're gonna look for trails, and we're gonna try to get set up on a, on a spot where we think we can have a pretty good ambush spot for a bow shot. It's hot already, we got cold drinks, and we're gonna load up, head down there, let's see what we can find out. A lot of people ask, you know, well, where can I hunt? How can I get into hunting or where can I go? And, the state of Tennessee is great, and TWRA does a really good job of offering public land access. Whether it's a wildlife management area, WMA, or even some of the state parks that allow hunting. When I kick off the season with a bow hunt, it's always great. It's always good to get in the woods and just feel the fall coming on. But what's also awesome about this hunt is that this is a bonus zone. So I'm allowed to shoot a doe, I'm allowed to shoot a buck, I'm allowed to even shoot a turkey of either sex and none of them count towards my statewide quota because on the WMA in this case, these are considered bonus animals. One of the challenges of public land hunting is always getting away from people. A lot of times things like water just impede people from getting to certain zones. So when it came to being drawn for the Hiawassee Wildlife Management Area lottery hunt here in Tennessee, there's a lot of islands and water as part of that area. So I knew that having a kayak was gonna let me be pretty nimble and let me get to places other people just couldn't get unless they used a motor. So being able to sneak in quietly, use the kayak to get to unpressured areas, that was the goal. I'm trying to find this little cove where I have thick cover behind me. I have what looks like a funnel point. So this is it. Be a good spot to sneak into quietly. a good sign. These are a little older. This deer track here, out here. I don't care where you're hunting, animals gotta drink. So it could be a seep in the ground, it could be coming to a lake like this. We're gonna move in a little further and see what more we can see, but hey, there's a deer here. This is where that kayak really shines. You know, we came in totally on the water. We didn't leave any scent where they're coming and going from. And then now we're staying in the mud, staying in the water. Our scent will linger along, especially with rubber boots. There's our main game trail. Just tons of foot traffic coming in, crossing. So this is a great spot if the wind is right. There's even a trail leaving right along the main phase here. Come in a little further, I found it's got a little open hummock. Good thing is, it's a lot more shooting lanes. There's some good trees to climb. I got good shooting direction. I don't have the sign though. This is what I love about hunting. This is now gonna ultimately be a decision. I can either decide to hunt here and commit to it, or I can decide to hunt the other spot. It forces you to make a decision, and ultimately your hunt is dictated by that decision. There's not a trail going that way. A whole bunch of trails converge right here. I've uh, got five well-used trails all coming together. If I don't want to be in here too long, I'm gonna get some of those tools, all this little stuff right along the main trails. Once I kind of visualize where my, my stand's gonna be, I'm just gonna come in and whack this stuff off at the base. There's over-clearing to me and there's wise clearing. I'm gonna clear out just enough without disturbing the area too much since I got on here tomorrow. We're on the way to the hunt. Stan is in, got a nice sleep. A little jittery, yeah, ready to go. We're in the red light district.
situated and we'll see what our work did. First day of the year, exciting. Shooting light. All we gotta do now is have something furry come walking by. On the scouting day, there were kind of two hot spots that I had found good deer sign. I thought there'd be good odds of having deer pass through. And we sawed out one that I thought would be better. The decision to go to one over the other could mean failure or success. Ultimately, that's exactly how it played out. We chose to go to one, and the deer, we watched them go to the other one. That's just how it is. Those three now took this trail right here. That's the end of morning number one. Saw three doe, and they moved about 50 yards from where we had set up our, our stand. So what we'll do is we just found two more trees about over that trail. We found some more good game trails. There's clearly game moving through here. Just a matter of time and sitting on the right trail on the bow range. And then make a plan and watch and see what happens. Time for the afternoon hunt. For the evening hunt, we were super stoked. And I get in there and hear a cough from a tree. And as I look over to the tree I'm about to climb, there's a fella sitting there 50 yards from where I was gonna climb. Now, I could have still climbed my tree, it's public land, he wasn't on the tree, um, but that's just not my style. I wouldn't want somebody to do that to me, so I'm not gonna do that to him. But there was definitely a bit of a letdown and saying to myself, well now what am I gonna do? And we saw a boat way in, we just didn't know what direction they went. These are the guards dealt to us today, so that's why you wanna always have a backup spot. Now, tomorrow, there's another spot on the map I wanted to check out. I'll make sure to go there and hopefully find some solitude. We'll have to come up with a little bit of a new scheme for the morning. I'm thinking, oh, other zone. I think it's time to find ourselves a plan B spot. Shot. 
Take a good visual reference. Everything looks different when you're on the ground from when you were on the tree. And now when she ran, I have a pretty decent idea where she fell, but you always want to find the arrow and follow the blood. All right, there's my tree, there's my window. I had a small window to shoot through. Remember that visual of the split tree? All right, there we go. So I see blood on leaves. All right, well there, there's the blood splatter. And there's my arrow. Covered. It's just perfectly red all the way through. That's as good as an arrow is gonna look. Nice thick blood. Knock the dirt off. Go get this deer. When you're blood trailing, it's very easy to get focused on looking for drips of blood on the ground, but make sure you look high. You can tell a lot about the hit on the animal based on how high on trees and things the hit is. This is a good example right here. If you can tell direction of travel by how the blood, when a drip hits a leaf, it splatters a little bit, it'll leave fingers. However the fingers are pointing off the drip, that's the direction of travel. Lots of blood, she's running high, she's jumping, so the blood's not so much on the ground, it's on these high leaves. Lots of blood, lots of blood. Okay, it's good blood. So where's she going here? Okay, she is. Nice dough to take and put in the freezer. All right, got flies on her. We'll get her down to the creek. Get her cleaned up. First, I'll say my thanks. This is, you know, early season, opening morning in Tennessee for Maine, regular archery season, and it's 90 degree heat as, as temps. Super hot, super humid, and First priority number one is to get that meat cold. As soon as I recovered that deer, brought her right back down to that creek, field dressed her, and got her sunk into the coldest, deepest pool I could find while I organized gear, and then got her back out to the kayak, and as soon as we could, packed ice, keep that ice from the Orions, pack it right into her chest cavity, get that meat as cold as possible. Now I have a big load shift. I have you know another 100 pounds I got to deal with versus what I came in. So it was getting her strapped onto the bow, getting the bungees, getting her securely rigged. So as I'm going across the lake, I don't want her falling off and going into the water. She had her nose dragging the water on one side, a couple of hooves dragging in the water on the other. But hey, so ultimately this hunt was about hunting somewhere new, discovering a whole new hunting experience by using a kayak. Never have gotten in and out with a kayak before. It was an awesome tool. And then having fresh tenderloins on the grill, opening night of deer season, can't beat that. Nothing better after a couple days in the field to enjoy the hard work. Now, public land opportunities exist everywhere. Have fun, get out there, see what can happen. This is Damon Vungard from Orion Coolers. We'll see you in the field. <laughs>